the, in the middle of uh, a series simply called uh, Revival. And by the way, didn't you just absolutely love all of the testimonies last week from all that God is doing in our young people and our students and just, uh, man, supernatural life change, turning points. I'm so thankful for that. Anybody thankful for the turning points that, that you've had in your life, moments where you knew, man, God changed the very course and direction of my life. Man, we need uh, more of those, don't we? We need more of those in our life. Praise God. Um, anyway, so uh, on, on this series or in this series, we're just kind of looking at uh, our need for a fresh move of God, what that looks like and how that affects us. And also we understand that God is moving right now. Hallelujah. His spirit is moving. And we've kind of just been looking into the book of Acts a lot. And so um, if you brought a Bible with you, you can open with me to the book of Acts chapter 1. The book of Acts chapter 1. And um, if you didn't bring a Bible with you, we'll do our best to put the scriptures on the screen. You can follow along that way. If you're watching online, uh, don't get so comfortable that you don't actually like get your Bible out and get a notebook out and, or take some notes. Make sure that you do that as well if you're watching at home today. In the book of Acts chapter 1, we're going to look at a couple of verses that um, we wouldn't or you wouldn't typically focus in on as far as in the book of Acts chapter 1 um, because it's sandwiched between a couple of really magnificent verses of Scripture. Um, one of them being Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 where Jesus says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then there's the book of Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit is being poured out on the day of Pentecost and they're all filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives them the utterance. But sandwiched right in between all of that, I believe is a key to walking and living in victory. And I believe it's gonna help us today. Acts chapter one and verses nine through 11. Again, Jesus just said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit's come upon you. You'll be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. Then it says in verse nine, it says, now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, while they watched, he was taken up. Now, you've probably read that before or just passed over that really quick. But just if you really stop and think about what's happening right now, his disciples are watching him and he is going up, y'all. This is not a trick. This is not a gimmick. This is not like a Superman movie. This is not fake. This is not, you know, the Avengers thing. This is none of that. This is for real, legit happening. He's, he's taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. How amazing would it be to see that, by the way? You'd be like, all right, this is for real. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, this same Jesus who was taken up from you, into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Wow. That's a massive, massive declaration and even promise right there. That Jesus, the same Jesus who right here ascended, who went up, these angels tell the disciples, all right, you're looking up, but know this as you're looking up that he's gonna come back in the same way that he left. Somebody say, Jesus is coming back. I believe that was central and key to the faith of the New Testament church, of the believers, that they had their attention on this reality and this truth that this same Jesus who died on the cross for us, the same Jesus who gave his life for us, this same Jesus who poured out his blood on the cross of Calvary, this same Jesus who was raised from the dead, this same Jesus who demonstrated that he was alive after the resurrection by many infallible proofs, this same Jesus who said the Holy Spirit's gonna be poured out upon you, this same Jesus is going to come back again. He's going to come back again. And I see that there's a central truth here that I believe is important. And it's just simply this. Look up. Somebody say, look up. Look up. Now, the past couple of years, at the beginning of the year, the Lord's brought me to a verse of Scripture um, and I've shared it with you a few times this year already, but I want to bring your attention to it again. And it's Psalm 5 and verse 3. Psalm 5 and verse 3. And the psalmist says it like this. He says, my voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. 
in the morning, I will direct it to you and I will look up. I'm gonna give you my attention. He's literally, I believe very literally saying I do this with my, with my eyes, with my head, with my very literal body. It's not just like, you know, it's kind of like a spiritual thing, but, but no, I very literally do this. He says, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna give you my attention. And he says, I will look up. What is he saying? He's saying, I'm gonna give you my focus. I'm gonna look up and I'm gonna look unto you. Now, something that I, I've just kind of got strong in my heart, and I just want you to think about this for a moment, write it down, but, um, but remember this. What holds your attention is giving you direction. What holds your attention is giving you direction. You could replace the what with who, but regardless, I think you get the point. What holds your attention is giving you direction, or who holds your attention is giving, your, giving you direction. So then the, the question would be, what are you allowing to captivate your attention? What are you allowing to captivate your mind and your thoughts? Because those things are influencing you. There's no way that you can watch a 24-hour news cycle and not be influenced by it, right? There's no way that that, that can possibly happen. It's, it's going to influence you. And I'm certainly for being informed and watching the news, but there's no way that you could watch that 24 hours. And how about for the past few months, if you watched it 24 hours and seven days a week for three months, there's no way that it won't influence you. It's going to affect you because you're giving your attention to it, right? How many of you, there, there, are, there are some things that are done that are actually paid to get your attention. Do you know that? Do you know what those things are called? Commercials. How many of you like commercials? No lie. How many of you like, like, I like commercials. Some of you are, Okay, two people, and some of you are like, I don't like commercials at all. It, commercials very, very much influence. I've seen a, a couple of, of commercials that have influenced me a lot, and, and now, you know, the commercials aren't just on television. Apparently, your voice is, you know, your phone is listening to you, and then they send you commercials on, based upon whatever it heard. How many of y'all are aware of this? You know what I mean? I mean, the other day I was playing basketball and we talked about Taco Bell or something like that. And then, um, and then I sat down and looked at my phone and there was like a Taco Bell, on, a Taco Bell thing on my Instagram. I'm like, I don't follow Taco Bell. I don't have no desire for a taco. But it's just funny that it literally popped up, right? It literally popped up. One of the things that I've been really interested in, and this, this is probably not interesting to everybody, but has been the release of the new Ford Bronco. Anybody, anybody heard? Okay, so Ford Bronco was really cool back in the day and then it's been, you know, disappeared for 20, 25 years. And then it's, they've been working on it for it to come back, right? And so I've been like looking at all the sneak peeks on YouTube and all this kind of stuff. And before, you know, before um, I could try to look it up on the day that it was released, it was sent to me, y'all. Ford brought like a two minute, you know, video. And I'm like, how, how's this happening? How did this even that, right? And, and, and I'm, I'm happy, I'm blessed. I got a nice vehicle, it's very good. I like it and all, but I'm telling you when I saw the video of that Ford Bronco, I'm like, what have I been missing out on? You know what I mean? Like, my God, this is the thing. Come on, commercials are designed to get you to buy something that you did not know you needed. Right? You had no idea. You had no idea that right after dinner, when you are completely full, you are completely satisfied, you are stuffed to the gills, that when you saw that Pizza Hut commercial, all of a sudden when that cheese, that melted cheese just strung across your screen, you know what I mean? You're like, my God, I'm hungry all over again. I didn't know I needed another slice. I didn't know I needed some food right now. Right? Come on. I, I can tell you one other thing. And, and Anybody ever seen the commercial for Atlantis? Anybody ever seen this commercial? Okay, Atlantis is like this. It's a, I guess it's in the Caribbean, something like that. And they got this massive slide on their commercial. It's like a tube and you go through it and it's like you, you fly through it and you're going through like where the waters where the sharks are and then you come out. I've seen that commercial for years and for years I want to go to Atlantis, y'all. I want to, I don't think you can go nowadays unless you like got three negative tests in a row or something like that. I don't know. But I want to go to Atlantis. <laughs> All I'm saying is what is captivating your attention is going to give you, is going to give you direction. So then what are you allowing or what are you intentionally giving your attention to? If you're wondering who or what has had or 
does have your attention, a good way to find out is to just listen to your own words. Listen to your own words. The, the things that are coming out of your mouth in conversation, the things that are coming out of your mouth as far as opinion, the things that are coming out of your mouth, you'll find what you have been feeding on or what has captured your attention is what is giving direction to you. Actually, Scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart. Sometimes when people say things that are disturbing to me, it's not the words that are so disturbing to me. It's what's really going on behind the scenes that are so disturbing to me. I'm like, how long have you been thinking about that for it to finally come out of your mouth? You know. But Jesus said, out of the abundance of the, the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, I came across this show um, some time ago. And again, in the midst of uh, the quarantine, stay at home and all that kind of stuff. And everything's been so different for so long. You know, um, I have probably uh, watched more Netflix than usual. Can I just be honest right there? Maybe watch a little more Netflix than usual. And I mean, we had a, a long list of projects, um, of things to accomplish at our house. And after like... 10 of those, I'm like, I am sick of projects. Anybody else got sick of projects? They're like, I am not power washing anything for another decade. You know, I'm done with this. And so anyway, so I came across this show called Alone. Anybody ever heard of this show called Alone? And um, before it was on Netflix and it's still on, it's on the History Channel. And so it's a really cool show, but uh, y'all want to know the premise of it? I'm not trying to give you a commercial for it, but you're some of you are going to look it up later. And so, but basically it's this, there's 10 people, all right, and there's maybe seven seasons or something now. And um, there's 10 people who are dropped off in some like, some really like crazy location like Patagonia or the Arctic or something like that. And they're dropped off by themselves miles away from each other. And it's not like naked and afraid. You can wear clothes. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. So they have clothes on, uh, but outside of the clothes that they have on, they can bring 10 survival items. You know what I mean? It can be a bow and an arrow. It can't be like a gun or anything like that, but like a bow and an arrow, hatchet, stuff like a tarp, things like that to uh, survive. And so uh, ended up watching this whole, uh, whole season. And then we, me and Aaron Cody wanted to watch season number one. All right. So we went back and found how we can watch season number one. So we're watching season number one. And the, and the winner of this, and I'll just tell you how it goes. Sorry, I'll make sure I get the whole story to you. All right. Whoever survives the longest out there without calling in or tapping out, and they have a little satellite phone to tap out with, and they're videoing themselves. There's no camera crew. It's just them out there. And so um, whoever survives the longest, and there's no time limit. You know what I mean? It could be 20 days. 50 days, 100 days, could be a year. Uh, whoever survives the longest, the last one out there wins $500,000. $500,000. But they don't know if other people are quitting or not. They're just by themselves. They're just out there. And so they just don't know. All right? And so it's really interesting because they start videoing them, and they're supposed to do this. They're videoing themselves, how they're building stuff, how they're catching stuff, how they're eating, how they're filtering their water. They start talking about all kinds of stuff, especially as days go by. I mean, one of the seasons, someone lasted like 89 days, y'all. 89 days. It's a long time. All right? And so, um, you know, so, so, but when you start watching these, these are y'all still with me on this? As, as you're watching this, you find that you can discover a lot about a person by the way they're talking into the camera, right? And you can kind of see, and it's almost like as we've watched this, you can see when they're about to tap out because their conversation starts going really downhill fast. It's like the way they start talking about themselves, the way they start talking about their situation, the way they start talking about everything. It's like all of a sudden, instead of the beauty of where they're at being what captivates them, all of a sudden they start talking about, I'm starving. I feel like I'm going to die out here. I feel like the bears are going to eat me. I'm losing my mind. I miss my family. This is not worth it. What am I doing? This is crazy. They start talking all like that. But there's this one guy, and this is season one, so if you go back to watch it, I just want you to let you know this is going to mess it all up for you Alan wins watch season two okay this guy Alan and, and it's not that he has like the best skill set out of everybody but somehow he just manages to keep the right attitude through it all 
I mean, he'll get on the camera, he'll start singing. He started reciting poetry. He starts talking himself up. He's like, you know what? I'm committed to being out here. And in the middle of it all, he just, he just sticks with it. And finally, on the last day, someone had quit. He wins the $500,000. His wife comes out there and he's showing her where he's living, where he's sleeping, where he fishes, all the stuff that he's done out there. And while they're there, he's kind of looking around like he's really gonna miss it, you know? He tells his wife, like, look at how beautiful this place is. Look at how wonderful this place is. Now, at the beginning of the show, there's one guy, he showed up, he left day two. He left day two, he, he saw a bear and he's like, I'm out of here, you know what I'm saying? I'm done, right? And there's a couple guys that quit, like immediately. They're just, I am done, right? But where some people see challenge, Alan saw opportunity, Right? His attention and his focus was different than the ones around him. Somebody say, be like Alan. I almost titled this message, be like Alan. But let's, how about be like Jesus is better, all right? Be like Jesus. But you get my point. The focus and the attention that he had is what, what kept him. In Proverbs chapter 4, it says it like this, and I want you to see this. Proverbs 4, this is, I'm going to read a few verses. This is verse 20 through 26. Some of you are like, is he going to read the Bible today or just talk about Alan? Both. I'm doing both. It says, my son, give attention to my words. Give attention to my words. I want you to understand something. Sometimes the way you look up is by looking down into the word of God. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Verse 26, ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. My son, give attention to what I am saying. Pay attention to my words. The Amplified Bible, verse 25 says, let your eyes look right on with fixed purpose. Let your eyes look right on with fixed purpose. Let your eyes look right on with Fixed purpose. I know I've said it three times. How about four? Let your eyes look right on with what? With fixed purpose. With fixed purpose. There's a minister you're probably well aware of, but in case you're not, his name is Brother Kenneth E. Hagan. He's in heaven now, was a great prophet of God. But there was a time in his life as a teenager where he was on his deathbed. He was given up, no hope to live. And there was a time when he gave his attention while he's on his deathbed to the word of God exclusively. And while he was in there, sometimes people would come, bring him a newspaper, bring him like the comic section of the newspaper. And he'd just say, I don't have time to read the comics. I'm on my deathbed. I need to read the Bible. And specifically, I need to read the words in the New Testament, which is to me, right? Which is to me right now in this dispensation. And you have to understand, all right, that while there's a lot of things and a lot of places that you could look, it matters when it's critical that you give your attention to the right places. You give your attention to the right voices. Why? Because what you are giving attention to is going to give you direction. It is going to fuel your thought life. It's going to change what you are meditating on. And therefore, listen, it matters where you look. Somebody say, look up. Somebody say, be like Alan. Amen. Anybody remember the apostle Peter and his, his journey, right? I guess you could say Peter had quite a journey. Some really highs, high highs and low lows. And one of the greatest you know, illustrations of that in his life of both is when he's in a boat with the disciples they're, they're, they're on the water, and then Jesus wasn't with them at the time, but then Jesus begins to walk on the water, which is fun, like crazy, like supernatural, of course. He's walking on the water. They think like, oh, man, it's a ghost. Like, what's going on over here? And then Peter ca- cries out to Jesus like, hey, if it's you, you know, tell me to come on out. 
And then Jesus says, come on. So then Peter steps out of the boat and then Peter begins to walk on water. Water. Any church kids ever tried this? Come on, don't lie. You heard this class, you heard this in Sunday school and you're like, I'm getting in the bath right now in the name of Jesus. God, if you're real, help me walk on the bath water right now. And it's like, don't test God that way, okay? But, right? So Peter gets out of the boat and he literally begins to walk on water. He begins to walk on water. But you know the story how it goes, right? There's wind there's waves. And scripture says that when Peter saw the waves, saw the wind, when he saw what was going on, that he began to sink, right? He took a step of faith and that step of faith was on the word of Jesus. He had his focus. He had his attention in the right place, but then he became distracted, right? I think for for many people, in this time, in this season. I believe maybe you started out 2020 and you're like, it's a walking on water kind of year for me. Come on, anybody like that? You're like, man, woohoo! I got my goal list, my, my things that are gonna accomplish, I'm gonna accomplish all things that are gonna happen. And all of a sudden you start seeing the wind and the waves. Y'all, there's a lot of wind and waves nowadays, all right? You start seeing the wind and the waves, and you're like, I just wanna live through this, you know what I mean? And there's certainly nothing wrong with crying out to Jesus when you are sinking. But notice, I believe that if you keep your attention in the right, place, you can keep walking out the supernatural, right? Now, how many are thankful that Jesus was merciful? Because we've all been there, right? Jesus was merciful. He, he calls out, I mean, when Peter calls out to me, he, he, all right, come on, it's going to be all right, Peter, right? And he's very, God's very merciful with us. But the attention is what I want you to see. It matters who and what has your focus. Where and what are you looking to for strength? Where and what are you looking to for guidance? Where and what are you looking to for sustenance or supply right now? Psalm 121 says it like this. Can I read it to you? Thank you for that one amen in the back corner. I receive that. Psalm 121 says it like this. I will lift up, and I'm gonna read a few verses, all right? This is actually, I think, the whole chapter. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Psalm 121, verse one. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. You know, it's still got a little King James in it when it says whence, all right? From whence comes my help. This is New King James. My help comes from the Lord. Psalm 121, verse 2. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Come on, somebody let this feed your faith right now. Behold, he who keeps Israel, that's the people of God, shall neither slumber nor sleep. Y'all, he don't need a nap. He's good. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun, the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. Come on, if, you, if you're going in and you're going in, if you're coming out, you're coming out. It's just, that's all the time, right? Amen from this time forth and even forevermore. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. The hills were a place of strength. So when he's saying I'll lift up my eyes to the hills where my help comes from, then he just makes it clear. My help, my strength, the source of my protection and my trust and my confidence is from the Lord. He has my attention. He has my focus. He's the one that I'm, that I'm looking to. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2, talks about how we have a race that we are to run. And then Hebrews 12 and verse 2 specifically, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. I like the way the Amplified Bible says this in verse two. It says, looking away from all that will distract. Looking away from all that's trying to get my attention right now. Looking away from all of those things. Looking on to Jesus. And I love how it says that he is the author and the what? 
How many know he's not finished yet? I said he's not finished yet. He's not finished with you yet. He's not finished with your future yet. He's not finished with his plan for you yet. He's not finished with you. He's not done with you yet. He's the author and the finisher of our faith, meaning the good work that God has begun, and it's been a really good work that God has begun, he will bring to a full and flourishing finish. And listen, I see the headlines just like you do. And I understand there is a lot of tumultuous things that are going on in our world. But let me just help you out with something. Jesus actually said all of this is going to happen. Things are going to happen in our world, right? And so we need to be more like the early disciples and let's look up. I want to read this to you, and I believe it will encourage your faith. In Luke 21, verse 27 through 28, Jesus just kind of given a little bit of description of signs of the times, of the end times. And he says, then, and, and certainly I, I'm not, I don't claim to be like the, the master theologian on end times everything, so don't try to like trip me up on it. But, but I believe this is easy and clear to, gri- to get a grip on. He says, then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Do, do you connect that with Acts 1 just like, yeah? Then we'll see the, come, uh, the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. He's, he's coming back. Now, notice, when these things begin to happen, you want to know what some instruction are? You know how, some simple instruction every day. When these things begin to happen, look up. Somebody say, look up. Look up and lift your heads because your redemption draws near. Your salvation. The Message Bible says, um, help is on the way. <laughs> and again, it's not that we aren't unaware. As the children of God, we, we ought to be aware of what's going on. But when we are aware of what's going on in our world, he says, look up. Look up. Let me have your attention. May your expectation, and when you're looking up, lifting your head up, your expectation is, hey, the author and the finisher isn't finished yet, and he's coming back. Listen, in in particularly my parents' generation and my grandparents, great-grandparents' generation, they talked a lot about the return of Jesus, that he's coming back. affected how they lived, how they lived their daily life. There was a conversation about it. I know sometimes in our life, we get so caught up with all of our plans and all the things that we want to accomplish while we're here that we kind of lose focus on the reality of this is not our permanent residence. This is not, listen, this is not home forever. If you're like, if you're not sure about that, come on, just live another 80 or 90 years. You'll figure out, you're going to transition from here, from this earth. So then our attention, our affection, and our focus needs to be on up and the things of up. The things of up certainly can and do affect what's going on here today. Can I give you one more scripture or y'all, did I max you out? Y'all got a little bit more? This is Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. I'll finish with this. I'm going to read it to you in a couple translations. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. It says, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind. Different translations say your affection. But set your mind, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. I want to read this to you in the Passion. So if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Oh, this is the message, excuse me. Act like it. Pursue the things which are, which, excuse me, over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Amen. When there's so much going on around us, don't lose your attention from the one who is the finisher of what he started in us.
good work he's begun, he will complete. Listen, Jesus may come back before you ever get a chance to use your 401k. I don't know if you've ever considered that, but it's very possible. Doesn't mean don't have one, okay? (laughs) We're living with a different perspective. Amen. He could come back today, y'all. He could come back tomorrow. My dad used to talk about when he was a kid, he's like he kind of determined if he's going to be good or bad that day, whether there was clouds in the sky or not. No clouds? Hey, gee, he's not coming back today. Let's live life for the, to the fullest today. Those clouds, you're like, hey, well, we just better be straight today. You know, Jesus could come back. The truth is this, though. Uh, Jesus don't need uh, these clouds. <laughs> when he shows up, they're going to be glorious clouds. <laughs> it could be a crystal clear day. It don't matter what kind of day it is out there. When it's time, boom, it's time. So what are we going to do? We're going to we're going to look up. We're going to be like Alan. We're going to be like Jesus. You 